Hello, um, so welcome to my talk. Um, uh, I'll be talking about writing runtime agnostic async libraries and if it's even possible. Um, and if it is, then how exactly? Um, let's get into it. Um, first of all, who am I? As uh, I was introduced, <laughs> my name is Zishan um, and I live in Berlin. Um, and I'm from, uh, like I'm a bit of a nomad. I've uh, lived uh, in many countries and um, originally from Pakistan, lived in Finland for eight years, um, in UK for three, in Sweden for one year, and now uh, I think five years now I've been in, in Berlin almost. Um, so yeah, it, and it seems that I'll be staying here for long, <laughs> but let's see how, how life goes. Um, and I'm a freelance uh, software engineer. Um, and um, uh, the, the funny thing is that Daniel mentioned uh, GStreamer. And that's the, that's the first project I uh, got into. Um, actually, I wasn't even out of my uni yet, and I, I got into it. And it was like 2001, the beginning of that project even. And I was one of the first users. Um, and I made a video wall out of it. So my, my background is more like systems uh, programming. Um, and uh, I've also been involved very much in GNOME that was also mentioned. Um, but recently, I've been more into uh, cloud and now um, web backends in Rust. Uh, and for the last four or five years, I've been super into, into Rust. Um, yeah. And yeah, as I said, mostly I might have a background in uh, free and open source software. Um, and um, these are my passions and, and likes. Um, I'm into flying. I have uh, 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 flying licenses. And I have um, um, three cats. <laughs> um, so about the talk, a uh, bit of background. Uh, first, uh, before I dive into it, because there's this is some a bit complicated subject, um, and I'm not sure most audiences have even uh, used async much in, in Rust, async await. So, what is it about async await in Rust? Um, it's um, it's like a normal uh, flow of um, a program, right? Like you when you write synchronous or or as I would call it blocking code. Um, instead of that, you um, you declare your function uh, to be async. Um, and then um, you, um, from another function, which has to be also async, um, you await for, for that async um, function. Um, and that's what async await, like very basic uh, thing is about that. And in here we are lying about um, reading a file, but we will implement, uh, add an actual implementation of this function later. Um, but for now we are, we are just lying and we have this code and um, what do we do is uh, we just run like uh, you know um, the function from from main, and it builds. Um, there's a warning, but it builds and it also also runs uh, fine. There's no runtime warning or error or anything. Um, but uh, that function that function that was printing something it doesn't actually that wouldn't actually print anything um, when you run this code. Um, and why not? Um, if you are coming from another um, your programming language there where you have experienced async programming, uh, this would be very surprising uh, for you um, because in other pro program languages, it will actually print something. And um, uh, the, the warning you get when you build, it gives you a, a hint, actually it tells you exactly what's wrong with it. And, and the reason is that um, you, um, when you call an async function, um, it doesn't actually uh, run the, the 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 code in the in the function uh, actually, um, it only returns you um, a, a future something called a future, and um, that future needs to be awaited. It doesn't. Um, it's the future. Uh, like what what does it even mean, right? And um, it's um, these these functions are returning uh, something called a future, right? Uh, it's a type in a standard library, and um, yeah, but I've also dreamed of seeing the future. Um, what is a future anyway? Um, and the, the future is a very simple trait. It's a, it has an output, just like a normal function, right? Uh, functions usually have an output. Um, and uh, this has one method only, and that's Paul. It's, it, it, it's a bit scary when you look at it, but it's actually not that scary in the end if you, if you know what's, what's it about. Um, it only has two parameters, right? Uh, but the main point here is that um, it has a pull and you have to pull it, you have to call this function. And um, so when you, um, in Rust, what it does is like, um, when you have an async function, it translates it into this. So the async is removed uh, from the function and the return value becomes uh, ample future and the output 
of that future is what you uh, declared the output of the function to be, right? Um, and uh, futures, these futures are inert um, in Rust. They don't run um, on, on their own um, until you explicitly run them somehow. Um, as, yeah, future needs polling. And that, as you saw, there was a poll method and uh, you need to continuously call that um, until it yields a value. Because um, the, the main point of async programming is that um, you use it for, for example, for IO and stuff like that, where the, the result might not be immediately available. So you might need to wait for it. Um, and instead of blocking on that, you can say that I, I want to await it. And um, and that's um, that's why it needs to be polled. And the poll function, when it's ready, when the, when the result is actually ready, it's supposed to be, that implementation is supposed to return it uh, finally. Um, and that 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 is done by something called runtimes, um, which is what we, which this talk is about. Um, you cannot directly call um, Paul on the on the future. Well, you can, but you will have to implement a mini runtime on your own if you want to do that, um, because it's designed to be uh, called by uh, by runtimes themselves. Um, and we don't have built-in runtime in in Rust, um, which which is why we have a, a bunch of runtimes out there and they're quite uh, incompatible. Um, and, and that's why there is a problem and that's why there is a need for, for me to talk about this subject. Um, and the most famous one are Tokyo um, and async STD, um, and, but there are many others uh, for different purposes. There are some, some that are very specific use case, uh, uh, they're designed for specific, very specific use cases. Uh, some are more generic, like Tokyo and async std are, are very generic ones. Um, and what what do these uh, runtimes actually do, right? Like how do you um, how do you consume those those futures or or run actually run those um, async functions that you declared previously to completion? Um, you need some kind of entry point, um, and that's why you have two entry points usually uh, provided by almost all of these runtimes. Um, one of them is uh, blocking on it, and there's a function uh, provided for that. And then there is uh, API provided for spawning tasks. And we will have a look at each one of them separately. First of all, it's blocking. And that just means you turn an async into a synchronous blocking uh, call. Um, and uh, you can have like a series of async calls and one async call waiting on another by calling that, uh, that function and calling dot await on it. Um, and then vice versa, and there could be a huge chain of that. And typically there is on, in async programs. Um, and then in the end you say, okay, I want to block on all of this together. And then you, you do something like this. Um, this is a async example, uh, async std example, but Tokyo provides a very similar API for, for blocking on, um, and all of them do. Like the, there's a block on method that I think in almost all runtimes, exactly the same name. Um, and there are main wrappers provided as well, so you don't want to do block on. Uh, they provide attributes, um, attribute macros, uh, where you declare, where you are able to declare your main function as async. Then uh, the, the Rust uh, uh, by default doesn't, you know, provide it out of the box. This so the runtimes provide this, uh, and also because you need a runtime to make it happen, and Rust cannot assume um, a, a specific runtime, so that's why it, it can't be there right, at least right now. Um, and then there's spawning. Uh, spawning is actually like how uh, futures and async works in other programming languages usually, um, which is when you when you call something an async uh, function, it starts running on its own. Um, but uh, and in in Rust you have something called uh, spawning a task, a concept like that, uh, where you say I want to start it now this async block or uh, function, and um, it will just spawn it uh, immediately. Um, yeah, it, it depends a, a bit. Um, so tasks in async world is very similar to threads in, in, in the synchronous uh, world, um, except that task could be threads in multi, uh, multi-threaded runtimes, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. There are single threaded runtimes as well. Um, and in the same um, runtimes, there's options to, to use whichever you want to use uh, for, for your use case. Um, so yeah, it, it could be threads, it could be not threads. 
Um, but um, they are similar in the concept because you spawn them and then you can wait on them. You can, um, um, yeah, you can wait for for them to finish, um, just like you you do with uh, threads. Um, yeah. Um, so that's what we are doing here, like just pointing to tasks and and then just sleeping, giving them a time to, a time to finish. So, um, runtime agnostic libraries, right? Um, that's what you came here for. Um, I have to say that you might be disappointed <laughs> with my talk, and it's not. Uh, I don't have a lot of good news. Some a lot. There's a lot of bad news and some good news here. Um, so, be prepared. And, and the reason um, I'm doing this is because I, I have been um, maintaining and developing a library called Zebus, which is an IPC uh, library. Um, and the main point of that, I, because it's an IPC uh, library, um, the main thing is IO. And um, this is where you really need async. You really want async. And our first um, version, uh, Zebus 1.0, 1 1 was uh, fully synchronous. Uh, we added some async bits later, but it wasn't really async. And with 2.0, it's now primarily async, actually. Um, with the synchronous uh, parts are now just wrappers around the async, actually. Um, so uh, so I got bumped into all these issues that are there because of um, having different kinds of runtimes and them being incompatible. So, um, so I, I decided that maybe I should share the knowledge I gained from that time. And um, and it will be useful for others, um, I hope. Um, so, read from file, right? Um, we uh, the, the code I shared before that I didn't implement actually. Um, let's implement that. Uh, let's assume it's part of our new library, uh, which is something which needs to be asynchronous because it's reading from a file, so it's I/O. Um, so, but it could be a socket. It could be anything. Um, and let's do it. Like, um, so how do we do it? Like, we need some kind of async um, API to read files, and one of the APIs uh, would be, um, I guess, Tokyo, right? Um, and uh, the async stud provides something similar, uh, most likely the same. I haven't checked actually, but um, uh, I checked it a while ago, but I don't remember. Um, but yeah, it's very similar. Um, so we choose Tokyo for this one, right? And um, we use the file open, just like you would do in uh, synchronous code. Just the difference is that you would await it, and your function is async now. And um, this does the job. And um, client code works just fine. Client code uh, just calls it and waits for it in their um, async main. Um, all good. But what if the client doesn't use Tokyo? Um, what then? So they will do something like this. It's almost the same code, just that you have async std main instead of Tokyo main, right? It will just build just fine, actually. But at runtime, you will get this warning, or actually error, um, because it's a panic. Um, there is no reactor running. And the reason is Tokyo, excuse me, uh, Tokyo APIs assume a Tokyo runtime. Uh, by the way, probably you saw it's uh, talking about reactor, not uh, runtime. Um, there is a subtle difference between reactor, runtime, and there is another term. Um, but uh, for the sake of this conversation, they are very similar, and they're used interchangeably, actually. So um, that's not it. Ah, the other one is executor. So executor is something very similar, but um, it's used interchangeably. So we will do the same for simplicity here. Um, so yeah, um, uh, it resumes a runtime, so we can't do that. Um, and the other problem that you will have uh, when you write async um, libraries, right? Um, you will need to spawn a task. You don't want to um, uh, always wait on something. Like um, I'll give you examples. Let's say you need some background chores. Um, an example of that would be, um, for example, in Zbus, we had to. Um, have like a we have a connection which is like backed by a socket, and we can have multiple like maybe hundreds, maybe even thousands of streams that need to read at the same time from the same socket. How do we how do we do that? How do we accomplish that? We tried different ways, um, um, including you know uh, locks and stuff, but that's like a really really messy and it can easily deadlock. Like we had so many deadlocks developing that code. Ultimately, I gave up and went for other approaches. And in the end, we ended up with this approach, 
where we have a broadcast channel um, and um, the, the, the sender is uh, just receiving from the socket. It has only access to the socket itself and all these streams are just receiving um, um, on that broadcast channel. Um, so I, each time something comes on the socket that, um, you know, um, receive, uh, the, sorry, the sender, the broadcast sender sends it to all the streams. But how does it work? Um, someone has to be there. Someone has to be reading the socket. Who, who is the sender? What is the sender? Um, so uh, there has to be a thread, right? Or some task. If it's a task, which runtime would it be in? Like we are assuming no uh, runtimes, remember? Or at least we want to not assume any runtime. So how do we accomplish this? Um, so that's one another problem. And uh, another very related problem is async callbacks. Um, a, or any kind of user code that user gives it to you when you have to run. Um, it doesn't have to be necessarily callbacks. There's other examples of that. Um, so um, if it's async, how how do you wait for it? As I said, you need a runtime for for waiting on on async. You to uh, to execute the the, the future to, till completion. So how, how would you possibly do that without assuming a runtime? Solutions. Uh, no perfect solution. I warned you. You will be disappointed. And uh, yeah, uh, I'm sorry. There isn't any. I tried very hard to find one. It there isn't. Um, the first solution that is that comes to people's mind, and a lot of people went for that, um, is to give in to Tokyo. Um, and there are some pros to that. Um, definitely compatible with majority of your apps. Um, most apps out there, as far as I know, use Tokyo. And if I'm not mistaken, the, it's increasing the number of um, apps using it. So if you just want to be compatible with most apps and you want to make them happy, um, it's the easy way out. You just do it, and and just. Uh, but then you um, you have to be uh, okay with the cons, which is you're requiring Tokyo, um, and um, it's not like um, Tokyo is always possible to use um, for for the apps. There is many use cases where Tokyo, at least right now, would not fit. It's a very generic um, runtime. It's a very generic API, and it's very good at that, but. Uh, for specific use cases, let's say um, you want to do something for um, embedded systems where you have very limited resources. Um, you don't want, you, you would ideally want something that doesn't even allocate, or at least it doesn't assume um, a STD uh, library. So um, you can't use Tokyo there um, because currently it doesn't uh, support uh, NoSted. And even if it did, it doesn't support uh, no, no alloc at least. So. Um, um, yeah, that would be one example, but I'm sure there are other examples where you just it's just not feasible. Um, so you are, you need to be okay with that uh, that you on for those use cases your uh, API would not be useful. Um, yeah, as I said, it's not always possible. Um, use um, yeah the second approach um, which I started with in Zbus in the beginning was use um, is uh, runtime agnostic crates. Um, and there are some out there. And uh, the, the, for example, the primary one that we used, um, and also I somehow ended up becoming uh, the, the maintainer, <laughs> well, one of the many maintainers of it, um, is, um, is, a, is a project called SmallRS. It's also um, a runtime, um, a very small runtime, uh, but it's more like a runtime kit. So it's just divided into small, very, very small um, uh, subcrates. Um, uh, that make up make it up, and um, uh, they they provide different functionalities. Like for I/O, you would use async I/O. For channels, you would do async channel broadcast, async broadcast, and stuff like that. Um, I'll go through with some of these um, in a bit, and some of them are truly um, um, is uh, like they're agnostic to to runtime. They don't have to do anything weird to do that, like async channel, async broadcast. Um, uh, especially there, uh, they don't assume anything. Um, the others don't, but as well, actually, but there is some uh, some cons. I'll, I'll talk about it in a bit. Um, so the pros, you you will be async uh, uh, runtime agnostic mostly. There is there is a one small thing that I'll talk about later, but mostly you are uh, compatible. So so you're good. Um, and then. Um, 
cons, um, yeah, it has to launch threads, uh, at least some of those. And one of them is async IO. Um, and the reason is, um, if you remember, I showed you the, the future um, trait, uh, the poll method, it um, also gets like a context. So uh, as I said, runtime calls the poll continuously until the, the future is resolved. Um, but it doesn't busy loop. It doesn't keep calling it in, in a loop. Um, it, um, it calls it only when it's ready. Um, and how, do, how does it know when it's ready? Um, there is, um, the, in the context that's passed, there is also a waker. So the, the, the runtime uh, gives a way uh, to the future implementation to call it back when it's ready. And um, uh, so how would that be accomplished? And the, the main way is to, to use threads. And um, async IO is no exception. It, it uh, launches a thread to, to monitor that uh, those sockets or whatever is behind um, the, the future and um, wakes up the, the, the runtime uh, that, hey, I'm, I'm ready now. But, but you have an hour uh, thread running behind your back, at least one. <laughs> um, and then um, another thing is async executor. Um, what this does is that you have um, a small, really tiny runtime um, if you used it in, inside of um, your library, like Zebus does. And um, how we use it is we um, all the chores that I mentioned that we have to uh, do inside the library and all the user callbacks that we need to call, uh, they are done as a task on this executor. Um, and this executor, of course, needs to be, someone needs to run it, right? Um, someone needs to, it's called ticking. Someone needs to tick it. Um, and um, uh, how would you accomplish that without having a runtime, right? Uh, where, where, do you, where would you run the task that runs these tasks of this executor? Um, so uh, that's, um, that's a bit of a problem. But this um, you can accomplish with, with threads. Um, uh, this is how we did it in Zbus. And, and you can, of course, also do it. So by default, we, we run a thread. Uh, that um, that runs this this ticks this uh, this executor, but you don't necessarily need threads actually. Uh, what you can provide is um, like we do in in Zebus. This is a Zebus example. Is the like we have a connection builder that connects creates the connection, but at the same time you can tell it to disable the internal thread um, that we were going to launch for you. Um, and then uh, once you have the connection, what you can do is uh, run that with your own runtime, like whether in this case it's Tokyo, but it could be any runtime and you can spawn a task and then you can just, um, you know, execute, uh, like, sorry, tick the executor. And as you can see that itself is also async. So um, it's perfect for, for running uh, in a loop inside, um, inside, a, inside a task um, in, a, in your runtime. Um, so, but it, as I said, it's still not 100% compatible with Tokyo. Um, and the main thing is um, the user code that you need to run, uh, because if you are um, if there is no uh, Tokyo runtime running, and then you call something that as that is a Tokyo API, it will assume a Tokyo runtime and it will fail because there is no Tokyo runtime running. But if you do it like we are doing here, uh, of course there is a run then a Tokyo runtime running everything, so uh, it will be okay. But that assumes that there is a um, you're out, from outside you you do this. Uh, yourself, which is a bit of manual work. It's not a lot of work, as you can see, but still it's on you as a user to, to do this. And users can't be expected to remember this, right? Um, so yeah, it's not out of the box working. So another compromise that we ended up in, in Zebus in the end was to do both. Um, and what does it mean uh, by that? It's you, you use a feature, uh, uh, cargo features, and you, um, um, yeah, you by default you use something like async IO, um, but um, people sh should be able to dif disable that as like when you you, know, you can uh, disable default features and then you can enable Tokyo feature. And once you do that internally, um, we can uh, you know um, handle it. Like we uh, use the Tokyo APIs everywhere um, for everything. If you if you do that, if you uh, disable async IO um, and enable Tokyo. Um, and if you don't, then we use uh, the ESIC IO um, and launch threads. Um, so because we have to, um, there's no other way. Um, but now user has a very um, easy way 
of accomplishing. Like if they are using Tokyo and don't want to bother with anything, they can now do that. And um, yeah, they don't they don't have to care. And the pros of this is, um, yeah, user doesn't need to do much at all. Uh, just uh, declare it right in the, in the cargo toml, and that's it. And the cons, um, it co really complicates the library code, right? Let me show you an example. Uh, this is just a, like a small part, like uh, of of the code that we had to do, and um, you know, uh, we have to write, we had to write in, in Zebus. Um, you you need to you know have a lot of these CFGs um, in the code. Uh, well, we ended up with not as many as I thought would we would, but still it's it's a lot more than I would want. Um, and um, I've heard there is now crates that actually um, abstract this. Um, I, I haven't tried those. Maybe maybe I can I, I will have a look at those and um, uh, which abstracts different runtimes for you and um, you know uh, you can just enable whichever you need and then you don't have to do it in your in your code but that crate does it for you. Um, but I don't know. I wouldn't vote for it because I haven't tried. But have a look. Um, so yeah, that I, I I I'm sure that makes you sad um, with what you can possibly do. Um, but that's how it is. I'm sorry. Um, but there is some hope. Um, uh, there is an async working group uh, for a while now, um, for many months, uh, half a year I think. And I was actually in the end, in the, uh, sorry, in the beginning part of that. Um, and provided uh, as much feedback as I could and, and make sure that uh, the people who are actually working on that stuff to make it uh, better, the async uh, parts of Rust, uh, they know all the problems uh, that exist. Um, and, and, and they are they have uh, proposals, they have, um, yeah, they have, they, have, they have ideas of how to improve things. Um, I, I'm not sure how much would, would they be able to achieve, um, but um, because it, it needs a lot of collaboration with the with the runtime uh, folks, right, the, the maintainers and stuff, and they might not have the same priorities as the async working group or the upstream. So I, I'm not sure how, how far it would go, but I'm pretty sure it will go far enough that it will not be as horrible as it is right now um, when you want to be async uh, runtime agnostic. Um, yeah, there is uh, there's ideas for creating some traits and um, abstractions in general for, for different runtimes in the, in the standard library. Um, so that you can um, you can have some generic API that you don't need to assume a specific runtime to to do specific things. Um, so yeah, we're looking forward to that once that's that's there. Um, so there's some hope. Don't don't worry too much. <laughs> and that's all. Um,